Welcome to day nine of the Brew Crew Podcast Chuggalo Advent Calendar Spectacular. It is quite a day so far. I'm excited to get to this. Today we are drinking Butcher and the Brewer, the Fog and the the Frog and the Hog, excuse me, comes in at six percent. Doesn't say what it is, but after a little bit of research, it's a Pilsner. I'm gonna go with the crack and then I'm just gonna get into the day so far. First, as I want to say, always have a good opener around. Always have something that has a story. I know a couple of days JT's been using Molnir, which is uh, Thor's hand uh, hammer. So it's funny, he was using one, I gifted him, and I've been using one. This is just a, like I said, we call it Richard. Uh, I wonder why. Again, that's why this translates so well to video. Um, uh, it's just nice to have a opener that has a little bit of character instead of, you know, just like a standard one or something that you would have on your keychain. I don't know. I guess I'm just a fan of koozies and openers. So with that said, there was a huge development overnight that I woke up to. And uh, it was JT, you know, my partner in crime for uh, all 165 episodes, plus all the shorts, plus uh, the advent calendar. Uh, JT said that he is disenfranchising the Canner Boner segment. Well, one, JT, I'm glad that you picked today. But two, uh, that is still your gimmick. So that is one thing. If you listen to the podcast, if you're a loyal um, listener of the uh, the Brew Crew podcast, I will never gimmick and fringe on that. I will buy stuff because of it. But even in my years and years of drinking beer, I don't have a lot to say about like what's on the outside. There are things that are cool, that grab my eye, but that's about it. So when JT, um, sorry, Stacy bloviates, um, for long extended periods of time, that's his wheelhouse. That's his gimmick. So I know he seemed to be per- passionate about it. If you follow us on our Facebook page at uh, the Brew Crew Podcast, uh, that's that's his shtick. I'm not gonna ungimmick infringe it. I'm not gonna be like, you know what? We're 166 episodes in. We're nine days into the uh, the Advent calendar. You're just not gonna see it. So volley back to you, JT. I'm just not gonna do it. But uh, if that um, prevents other people that are participating. You know, now that he's, uh, you know, left it all on the table, feel free, and uh, there will be no reciprocity, according to JT, for infringing on the uh, the Canner Boner segment. So with that said, on to the beer. This is a Pilsner, ringing in at 6%. 6 uh, So Pilsners dot um, the um, domestic, you know, you have your lager, you have your Pilsners, uh, with Miller Lite, uh, again, probably the second or third. It's definitely in the top echelon for um, popular beers in the U.S. and most uh, avidly consumed. A little bit about the butcher and the brewer. So they're out of Cincinnati, or uh, Cleveland, excuse me. Sorry, all over the place. So we've had a couple of beers in a row um, from the state of Ohio. Uh, Just a little cursory uh, research uh, from their website, which is the butcherandbrewer.com. They, it's not just a gimmick. They're a butcher and a brewer. They do both things. Looking at the menu, I implore you to go to their website and just check out that menu. If that doesn't make you just want to go there and have all these handcrafted meats and all of these pairings that go so well, everything from wood-fired wings to uh, pork belly to, <coughs> sorry, Stacey, to all the finer bacon, everything that you could want and pair with just beer, it's fantastic. Um, I didn't find as much about their beer information. Um, you know, they have guest tap lists, kegs to go, but not, you know, as much as like what they're known for. So when you when you go to a brewer, we've always talked about this on the podcast, I'm going to Apple Brewery. Uh, and then if the first thing out of your wor- or mouth is, they have great food that's kind of a kiss of death for like when you're talking about their beer and being a beer podcast you know we'll talk about all the accoutrement and everything that accompanies beer very well we actually grade beers you know if they put it on the can or the bottle or the growler um (coughs) crawler excuse me uh if you know recommended pairings that's awesome thanks for giving me a head start but don't be known don't be a brewer and be known for your food rather than your beer. There's, you know, definitely a great line and a great wide line for like charcuterie places. Like um, I've lauded um, my hometown, uh, a place that um, I'm a big fan of, Third and Vine just opened up. And it's a a charcuterie bar, handcrafted, you know, right there, cheese plates, 
um, fine delicatessens, and then an awesome availability of beers. So that's awesome when it's a marriage, but when you know you're not you, there, they're a reseller, they're not making their own product. But when you uh, you know you're a brewer and you're like, oh, I went there, and then the first thing you tell your friends is, oh, the food was amazing. Ah, you know that's when I'm like, oh, really? And then I'm gonna probably point it out to you just because it's a fun thing. You know now that we've realized like in the last eighteen you know months to two years. It's a really refreshing Pilsner. Again, it's higher than its peers on the market, being at a 6%. Um, there's not much to it outside of that. But again, with the Pilsner, and especially like if you're doing it in German purity laws, there's there's not a lot of gimmickry to a novice like myself. And, you know, I'm not a, a Cicerone to, you know, check the different flavor profiles that are in there from the ingredient list. Um, but that said, it's a rather good beer. This is a beer I would like to keep around when um, I have, as alluded to yesterday, individuals that like um, that skew to like the the older, the more drinkable, the more readily available stuff that's been on the market for like 40, 50 years or different like iterations of that. Um, this would be great for both my uh, dad, uh, my father-in-law. This is definitely in that wheelhouse. Sorry, Stacy. Wow, very effervescent. Um, it just doesn't do anything for me. I guess I need more panache, more body, you know, something something more to it. Um, but it, it, it's a fine pilsner um, off the top rope. I'm gonna give it a three. It doesn't it doesn't have any misgivings. Um, it doesn't fail at anything. It just uh, doesn't wow. Uh, but it's a pilsner. It's not supposed to. When's the last time that you had a pilsner and it just blew your socks off? I'll wait. Wow, nine days in this and I'm just, I'm still elated. I knew uh, tomorrow we also have a draft beer just because when I reached in. So it's two beers that were, uh, were selected by um, our uh, calendar group and put into the box in random order. So we selected anything that's on draft, comes in a bottle directly from Barrel House and uh, everything that um, comes in a can uh, was provided by the um, by the staff at uh, the Barrel House, hand selected, picked with the exception of one beer that we punted out, um, picked without us uh, offering any commentary. So again, wow, uh, Butcher and the Brewer, check out their website, butcherandbrewer.com. This is the frog and the hog. It's a cat in a hat type beer. Uh, Pilsner is 6% off the top rope again to repeat comes in at a fine three percent i always think of everything that i want to say afterwards um but again still not gonna um infringe on the canter boner segment that's not that's not my deal i know there was other people that were scared that you know that segment was going away you know the commercials chuggle chuggle mom was saying the commercials have gone away the games have gone away now the canter boner segment eventually we're just going to be two two guys like sitting at a news desk we'll have the papers that we shuffle and we'll just sit there and we'll just read script that we uh, craft during the day. But uh, that's it. That's day nine in a nutshell. Cheers.